Next week will be Ash Wednesday, which begins the season of Lent. This may be familiar to many of you and quite new to others. Ash Wednesday and Lent will mark 46 days until Easter when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. That's 40 days like Jesus' time in the wilderness minus the six Sundays. Easter is such a wonderful Christian celebration. Jesus rose from the grave after dying on the cross for our sins. How wonderful! Because it's such a wonderful celebration, we we ought to prepare ourselves for such a joyful day. We should confess our sins to God and make amends. We should engage in extra study and anticipation. It's a great time for study, for, for joining the church, or for baptism this season of Lent. The, the word Lent just means spring in Old English, this time of year. It's a season for getting ready. We start with the day of fasting and prayer. We confess our sins and wear ashes on our foreheads in the shape of a cross reminding us of Jesus' sacrifice and triumph. It's an empty cross, like an empty tomb. That's Ash Wednesday. If you grew up in a liturgical church, this is familiar. In most Presbyterian churches, we began commemorating the beginning of Lent and marking our foreheads on Ash Wednesday about 25 years ago. Some Presbyterians in our denomination don't do it at all. All Episcopalians, Lutherans, and certainly Roman Catholics do. Some churches save the palm branches from last year's Palm Sunday, dry them for 10 months, and burn them to create this year's ashes. At First Presbyterian, we buy palm ashes so your pastors don't have to set fires or sift ashes. I've done it, and so has Pastor Ron, but... Buying them is better. You may be wondering, why ashes at the beginning of this season of preparation for Easter? Ashes were used in ancient times to express grief. In Job 42, Job says to God, I've heard you with my ear and now my eyes see you. Therefore, I abhor myself, I repent in dust and ashes. The prophet Jeremiah calls for repentance by saying, O daughter of people, gird on sackcloth, roll in ashes. The prophet Daniel recounted pleading to God, I turned to the Lord God, pleading in earnest prayer with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. That's Daniel 9.3. Just prior to the New Testament period, the Maccabees prepared for battle using ashes. That day they fasted and wore sackcloth. They sprinkled ashes on their heads and tore their clothes. First Maccabees 3, 47, and also in the fourth chapter. Examples of the practice are found in several other books of the Bible, in Numbers, Jonah, the book of Esther, and Hebrews 9.13. Jesus is quoted as speaking of the practice in Matthew 11 and Luke 10. If the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes, said Jesus. The cross we wear is an empty cross of ashes, reminding us ultimately, of Easter, and the point we're aiming towards, Resurrection Sunday. Wearing sackcloth is like wearing a burlap sack to itch and be uncomfortable with our sins, recognizing they've made God and others uncomfortable also. You don't need to fast or wear burlap next Wednesday. I've fasted before, and I don't know if I'll do it this year. Fasting does heighten our awareness of being dependent on God for everything, not only our meals. 
I did not see the movie Fight Club that came out in 1999 starring Edward Norton and Brad Pitt. But it has a tagline that the first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about the Fight Club. It's a secret. Same thing goes for fasting. It can be a wonderful Christian discipline. But it's not much of a discipline if the Christian talks about their fasting all the time. I'm fasting today. I've heard someone say, no, fight club rules. We don't talk about fasting. Because Jesus taught, taught, taught us. In Matthew 6, he said, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father who's in heaven. Later in the chapter, he says, whenever you fast, don't look dismal like the hypocrites. They love to disfigure their faces and show others that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. So, we may be very public about ashes on our foreheads, but if we do other disciplines, we don't talk about it. I invite you to come to First Presbyterian next Wednesday. The sanctuary will be open midday from 11 to 1 for prayer and the imposition of ashes. You may come and pray for a few minutes and not receive ashes. Or you may dash in over your lunch break for the ashes. Pastor Ron and I are available that evening from 5 to 7 for folks who cannot come at noon. The sanctuary will not be open because bell choir will be practicing at that time. Call the church office or email one of us and we'll meet you on the church steps between 5 and 7. In a time of COVID, we're going to wash our hands well, wear masks, and use a cotton swab like a Q-tip to put ashes on folks' foreheads. We're going to err on the side of caution. Even if you don't leave home next Wednesday, February 17th, take time to confess your sins to God and make amends with others. Seek their forgiveness and be ready to forgive other people. Although I've given the history of Lent at the top of this recorded talk, I'm going to talk further about the Lenten practice and preparation for Easter next week in Walk's Wednesday Words. I'm Walk. Thank you.